Okay, so maybe you already have a call center job experience, or maybe you have a job experience, but it was not in the call center. Or maybe you're a fresh graduate and you have zero job experience. If one of these three applies to you, keep watching because in this video, I'm going to show you how to answer the most dreaded interview question in the history of call center job interviews. And that is, tell me something about yourself. I'm also going to show you a sample answer for each of these three scenarios. So by the end of this video, you should be able to understand the purpose of this question as well as tailor your answer so that it is unique to yourself and it is not a copy of anyone else. So keep watching. But first, let's understand why interviewers love to ask this question. So the reason is that they simply want to know the person in front of them. They simply want to know you, how you are as a potential hire, how you are as their employee or as a past employee. They simply want to know you as a person. And for this, there's no better question than tell me something about yourself. So how do most applicants answer this question? They usually answer this question by giving out one word information about themselves like first name, last name, address, gender, age, birth date. Let me give you an example. So I'm Sheena. I'm a graduate of bachelor's degree of education. I'm 27 years old. I live in Davos City and I was born on May 18, 1983. And here's why this answer just doesn't satisfy the question. It's too impersonal. It's too robotic. It's all one word per personal, simple personal information that you can even find in the resume. It doesn't really tell you, the interviewer anything about who you are as an employee, as a potential hire, and as a person. It's basically just a bunch of gibberish that doesn't mean anything to the interviewer at all. I mean, who cares about your age as long as you're of legal age to work? Who cares about where you live as long as you go to work every day? Nobody cares about your birth date and birthplace. So here's a good way to answer it. So instead of talking about yourself in one word personal information, you want to talk about the job you had. You want to talk about the task involved in it and the skills you learned. But before I give you an example, let me just answer another question that I usually hear all the time. Should I or should I not talk about what's on my resume? A lot of people say that you should not talk about what's on your resume. Well, it's a little more complicated than that. You actually still want to talk about what's on your resume because after all, your job title is there. But you want to add something that isn't there. You want to expound on it. Instead of just talking about your job title, you also want to talk about the task you've learned from your previous job and the skills you've learned. Let me just give you a quick format. So first, you want to state your first name, your educational attainment, and then talk about your previous job experiences. This is where you expound on your answer. Instead of just stating your job title, expound by talking about the task involved in it and what you've learned. This will give your interviewer a quick but detailed overview of your employment background. Because of this, she will have a better understanding and idea about who you are as an employee. Another thing is the more you could relate your previous job experiences to the job description of a call center agent, the better. Obviously, if you already have an experience in the call center, then this would not be much of a problem because you already have an experience and you have nothing you have nothing much to prove. You've already taken the job in the past and you have passed the interview. For example, if you have a call center experience, you can just say, I'm Sheena, a graduate of computer programming. For four years, I worked as a customer service representative for an e-commerce store that sells kitchen supplies. My task was to answer a customer's questions about order delivery dates, as well as process payments and refunds for them. It was a challenging job, but I learned a lot from it. As you can see, it's really easy if you already have a call center experience. But what if you have a job experience, but you have no call center experience? How could you relate your previous job to the job description of a call center agent? Well, here is a format I recommend. You want to start with your first name 
and then your educational attainment. Next, you still want to talk about the task involved in your previous job experience. And lastly, this is when you relate the two jobs together. The idea is to emphasize an element in your previous job that is also present in a call center agent's job description. So let me show you an answer I gave the interviewer four years ago when I first applied as a call center agent. My job experience at the time was I was a cashier, a service crew, and a sales lady in a mall. So let me show you my answer. Hi, I'm Sheena. I graduated a two-year vocational course in computer programming. After graduation, I worked as a sales lady in SM at the ladies' department for six months and then as a service crew in the milk tea store for nine months. As a sales lady, my task was to assist customers when they're fitting clothes in the dressing room. As a food service crew, my task was to clean the store, serve milk teas, and process customers' payments. One thing I learned from both of these jobs is that People buy product because they need it. But what makes them come back for more and become a repeat customer is an exceptional customer service. When I found out that your company is looking for customer service agents who would serve customers internationally, I just couldn't pass up the opportunity and decided to apply. But what if you couldn't relate your previous job to the job description of a call center agent? Maybe you were... A nanny or maybe you are a construction worker these two jobs are just so different from the task of a call center agent and if this is the case if there's just absolutely no way to connect to the task of, of your previous job to a call center agent then don't sweat it just you can still you can still state your first name your educational background the task involved in your previous job and but you want to add one thing and here's what you want to add you want to acknowledge the fact that you don't have a job experience, but you need to emphasize that you understand the job description of a call center agent and that you know what you're getting into. Let me just give you an example. So right after you state your first name, your educational attainment, and the task involved in your previous job, you want to add something like this. I know that my previous job experience is different from a call center agent's, but before I decided to apply here, I did a lot of research. I asked a lot of call center agents and I knew fully well the workload and stress involved in working in this industry. And I still really want to take on this challenge. By saying this, you're able to end your answer gracefully. And at the same time, you're telling the interviewer that you're not just here because you think that being in a call center is cool. You're here because you want to get the job despite your lack of experience and that you're really willing to learn. You're acknowledging the fact that you are inexperienced, but you're showing the interviewer that you did a lot of research and that you really want to be in this industry. And that at least counts for something. There's a plus there. But what if you're a fresh graduate and you have no job experience. What are you gonna say? Well, this gets a little trickier because you have nothing to show off to the interviewer because you just graduated and you don't have a job experience. So let me just show you the format and what I recommend. First, you still wanna say your first name, your educational attainment, but this time, talk about your accomplishments in school, if there's any. After that, if you don't have any accomplishments in school, then you tell your interviewer a story about yourself. What I mean by that is you could talk about your hobbies like reading books, watching movies, maybe you like sol solving puzzles, and how you are as a person, maybe you're an introvert or an extrovert, what are, what are you proud of in your life and your dreams. So. As much as possible, you want to create a connection between your answer and the job description of a call center agent. Let me just give you an example. This is a bit of a long answer because I want to show you the example for all my recommendations here. But you feel free to remove the things that you don't like or doesn't apply to you and, and feel free to add the things that you want to include in your answer. And again, as much as possible, you want to relate your answer to the job of a call center agent. Like, for example, you like reading books. 
that could probably mean that you like improving yourself or maybe you like solving puzzles that could mean that you're analytical or maybe you like watching foreign movies which means you're curious about the culture of other people around the world something that paints you in a good light you can use that so let me just show you my answer hi i'm sheena i just graduated computer programming last september and since I don't have a job experience yet, let me tell you about my life as a student instead. When I was in college, I was the editor-in-chief of our new school newspaper. I also loved joining extracurricular activities, especially sports, whenever I could. Any activities that involves a lot of people, you could expect me to be there. I guess what I love about it is the feeling of being a part of a group. I'm an extroverted person, so mingling with people comes naturally to me and even gives me a great pleasure. I guess I'm what you would call a people person. If you ask me about what I'm most proud of about myself, I guess it's when I managed to graduate college without any failing grades. My course is a really tough one. Lots of students usually drop out within the first and second years because of stress and pressure. But somehow, I was able to push through it all and make my parents happy. And for that, I am proud. Okay, so as you can see in the first paragraph, it says here, I was the editor-in-chief of a school newspaper. So this is the part where you highlight your accomplishments in school. Maybe you joined, maybe you represent your school in competitions. So you could include that. And there's a part here that says, I love company. I am an extroverted person and I love mingling with people. Well, for a call center agent, this is particularly good because you're going to be talking to customers eight hours a, a night or a day. And being an extroverted person could be an advantage for you. But this doesn't mean that just because you're an introvert, you can't work in a call center. I'm an introverted person myself and I, I, I did work in a call center for four years. But that's a topic for another video. So... The part that I really love the most about this answer is the last paragraph about being proud of being able to graduate without any failing grades, despite the fact that a lot of students drop out on the second and first year of the class. And I think that is remarkable because you're showing the interviewer that you're a diligent student and you're determined to, to finish your studies despite the stress and pressure. And that is particularly good because in the call center, there's always going to be stressed. You're always going to be stressed. You're always going to be facing hard situations. And that's what I mean by relating your answer to the job description of a call center agent. So that's it, guys. I just want to give you a quick summary. So first, to answer the question, tell me something about yourself. Always, always highlight your career and previous job experiences first because you're basically applying for a job but if you don't have those if you're a fresh graduate you want to talk about your hobbies your how you are as a person what you did in school your accomplishments and as much as possible relate them to the job of a call center agent let me just give you some reminders first you need to be prepared for follow-up questions Whatever you answer to this question, that is where your interviewer will base his or her next questions on. Number two is that delivery. The delivery is very important. You have to be aware of your rising and falling intonation. And again, I'm going to create a video for that in the future. But know that delivery is really important when you're, you're applying as a call center agent. Because when you're talking to the customers, you're not really seeing face to face. So you have to compensate for that by modulating your voice and making sure that you're understandable over the phone. Again, that's a topic for another video. So make sure to subscribe to my channel if you want more tips about how to pass your call center interview. Another thing is that you have to smile. And I noticed that when you smile, there's actually a difference in the tone of your voice. When you smile, you're actually affecting your voice positively. And it also alleviates your anxiety. So it doesn't hurt to smile. It, I really recommend it when you're nervous. Let me just say that there are many other different ways to answer this question. And what I discussed in this video are what works for me back in the days when I was still job hunting. 
But this doesn't mean that this is the only right way to answer this question. So if, if you have anything to add, feel free to drop them in the comments below so that aspiring applicants could benefit from them in the future. Okay, that's it. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, consider subscribing because I'm going to be uploading more videos in the future. That's it. Bye.